What's going on guys, it's Complete Tech Crew. Today's video is gonna be kind of unique. We're gonna kind of be doing a how-to and an introductory one-on-one -on -one crash course on coaxial, specifically R RG6 coaxial, excuse me, and the various tools are the most commonly used tools in the industry. So whether you're a novice or you're a 15 years experience, 15 plus years experience like myself, you'll be good to go after this video. So let's dive right in. So the first thing you need um, when prepping or preparing to do or install coax, of course, is the proper type of coaxial cable. So this is an RG6. I have two different colors here. One is what we commonly see or what is commonly used with uh, uh, residential coaxial installers and commercial coaxial installers. So you have like your uh, for your Internet service provider or your television service provider, like uh, cable, uh, Comcast, Xfinity charter um, cox things of that nature um, there's several different ones i don't know every single one in every single state and city but um, those are uh, just a few examples of the many that are out there they commonly use this style of um, coaxial cable so it's basically uh i believe this is a comscope brand and this is a it's a really great cable it's a really great cable it's sub branded as a pct but I do believe it's uh, from Comscope. But if I'm wrong, I apologize about that. But it's a great cable. It's vanilla and colored. Um, it's installed outside and indoors. They usually run it along the side of the house when they're uh, doing quick uh, wall penetrations, whether it be a wall fish inside or running along the outside, just a wall pin directly in with a bushing and some silicone. That's commonly the application for that. This cable right here is a black RG6, same style. This is actually from Comscope as well. This cable is just a little different um, because it has the outside jacket. It's black, of course, and it is a different type of sh uh, shielding in the inside. And I'll show you that when we get to that point. But virtually they are the same exact thing. This is commonly used by general contractors um, when being installed in uh, pre-wire. So when they're building the house, they're pre-wiring it. They typically use this or you have your AV contractors that come in. They typically use a black cable because that's usually what's readily available um, in, in certain supply houses and supply situations. All right. So secondly, we're going to take a look at the type of F connectors. These are called F connectors. So RG6 F connectors, RG59 F connectors, RG7 F connectors and um, RG11 F connectors. So the F is for female because it has that opening. And here will be a male, and we call this a barrel connector, and some call it a coupler. So that's just exactly what that is. So if you look inside this barrel connector, it has a blue wax in there, or that blue color in there. That's a high frequency barrel connector. Oftentimes, more times than not, with, with uh, satellite applications, you'll see a high frequency barrel being used. With uh, cable or CATV applications, you'll see a white wax inside which is a low frequency barrel. So there is that difference. This is a RCA male end, and I'll explain that RCA, um, you guys seen these. They're not commonly used now for our applications because we're all using HDMI or Toslink cables. And this is a, a female here. So you see you have that uh, RCA female end, which is that opening there, excuse me. This is uh, your common splitter with your male ends and they're threaded and that's where the F connector goes on to, the female connector, like so. And we've seen this all, we've all seen this time and time again. So that's how that works. So just a quick rundown on what we're looking at as far as parts and pieces, it's very simple. All of these items can be personal purchased online from your online vendors. Don't wanna tell you specifically where, but there's several places. I don't wanna get into that right now. And um, if you take a look, you need a good pair of diagonal cutters. These are from Jernard Tools and their part number is right there. It's 8009. So it's a good pair of diagonal cutters. I like these a lot. Second most important tool will be your compression tool. And this specific one is from Jernard Tools as well. I love this company. I love their products. I never have issues. And when there is an issue, if there ever has been an issue, they have great customer service. So you just send it in and they get you a new one coming in no time. So this is a universal compression tool. This compression tool has your uh, selection, your universal selection for F connectors, B and C, which is a British Naval connector. You often you oftentimes see that on um, CCTV systems. So for like your security cameras and stuff like that. Then you have RCA, male and female. Those are your ends there. 
So we're going to keep it on the F connector in, which and you know it in your own because it's uh, stamped or labeled and it's pointing out the direction towards the connector body. So that's that. And then you can rotate these between uh, RG11, RG59, 6 and 7 on this side. So we'll keep it on the RG6 side. And last but not least is a great and to me it's the most important thing is a great strip tool. You have to have a great strip tool when you're doing coax. The worst type of strip tool to have is the one that you have to calibrate yourself. You want to get a pre-calibrated one. This one here is the coax die right here. It's universal. It does 59, 6, 7, and 11. This is an incredible tool. It's a great tool from Jonar. This tool comes in right up, just under 22 or 20 bucks from where I'm getting mine. You may find them cheaper online, so look around. The part number for this one is UST-500. So it's Universal Strip Tool-500. And then we'll turn it around and let you look at some of those uh, specs on the back. So basically, it's just giving you a quick synopsis and rundown on how to use the tool and the proper usage of the tool. So we'll get this opened up. And again, this is a great tool. It's from Jonar Tools. If you don't know about Jonar Tools, they're in the communications, uh, low voltage and electrical industry. They make tools for um, technicians and installers alike, and they make fantastic tools. They're a great company. So uh, do your research on them and see it. Go on their website, and they'll have a long list of... Um, vendors and distributors that they have available in and around your area. So be looking for them. So that's this tool here and I'll go over really fast. Again, this is the UST-500. And if I didn't say the part number, if it's out of frame, I'm sorry. This, the compression tool is CT-200. Very, very good compression tool. I've never had issues with these. I have quite a few of them, fantastic tool. So consider getting this when you're doing your shopping or your research. So back to the stripping tool, um, you have these blades here that I very, very seldom use. I actually don't use them at all. And if you're not careful, you can sometimes stick your finger in there, depending on the orientation of storage in your tool bag or your toolbox. So I oftentimes remove them because they're for cutting or stripping flat or ribbon style cable. It's not necessary. I use other tools and other strippers for that application. I solely use this tool for coaxial. I have other tools for stripping um, multi-conductor control cable and stripping category cabling. So I don't necessarily use this feature at all. But this is what I meant by the calibrated, the uh, calibration dial on the stripping tool. This this is typically no good because it's a lot of trial and error trying to get it right, making sure your embedment depth isn't too excessive so you don't uh, um, nick, score, or mar your center, your center conductors in your cable or your multi-conductor. So be careful for that. So this is the only feature I really use. When I'm doing 7-Eleven, I'll just flip this die over and uh, I'm good to go. So just keep it set and you make sure you always make sure it's seated well, set well, and utilize this uh, area right here on the die, your number die areas for your coaxial. Do not use this or you'll end up stripping too deep, nicking it and marring it, and you'll have a, a, a failing termination and connection. This right here, this kind of, it's, it's almost like a Velcro. It's the opposite end, the rough part of the Velcro. This is for uh, assisting you and aiding you on the braid of the cable. When you strip it, or once you strip it, after you strip it, this assists you with uh, uh, combing that braid back. And I'll show you that process once we get there. And here go your F connectors again. If I didn't go over the part number on that, this is a building product. Fantastic connector. This is one of the only connectors I know of that works flawlessly, perfectly every time with plenum rated coaxial which is a very different uh difficult cable to work with excuse me so again this is building and that part number is fsn s6u and here is your package right here for that specific brand and these are fairly inexpensive so they don't knock you over the head they come in a 25 pack or you can buy them in it more if you need that but 25 seems to be good enough for novices um, taking care of the business they need to take care of so i'll get that out of the way and I just keep all of these in frame. This particular brand is a PPC brand. This is a fantastic connector and you'll see this connector a lot in satellite applications and uh, residential cable applications. You'll see this a ton. So the part number on that is PPC EX609. And these connectors are very similar, almost one and the same, just different brand and one has a different feature than the other. But as far as the time to install, they're virtually the same and they are fantastic, excellent connectors. So in, prep, in prepping the cable, what I'm gonna do is just cut this end off so I can show you guys how to get going from the beginning. All right, so we got our cable 
prepped um, and cut. What we want to do is insert the cable here and we're going to stop at our stop guide right here. So it's just a little guide to help us control the length of the center conductor. So when we're stripping, just make sure we affix the tool firmly and we'll go this way and then we'll come back and then we flick off and you'll have some shards inside of there. That's just garbage. Let's get that out of there. Scoot it over and make sure those little, uh, those little foil, what we call them foil, they're foil braids. You want to make sure you get those out of the way, you know, because they will get stuck like in clothing and get stuck in your skin and it's like a splinter. It hurts. It gets in there good. So just be careful of that. So the most important thing first when stripping this cable is getting this, um, we want to get the foil braid or the braid off of the cable to the best of our ability or off of the actual foil, excuse me, to the best of our ability. And that's exactly what we're doing here. And uh, being that I'm, you know, my experience, my tenure so long in this industry, I really very seldom use this feature of the tool to comb it back. But you guys are more than welcome to do that if it helps you out. So basically, that's how it's utilized. Hopefully you can see that. I'm trying my best to keep everything in frame. That's how that goes. It has to stay away from your foil shield. So this braid has to be away from it. So if you're familiar with category cabling or shielded category cabling, you have to ensure that the shield and the drain wire, because the drain wire is your actual ground, that the drain wire uh, is, is, is removed or not removed, where it's extracted from or away from the shield. You cut your shield away after it's stripped before your prepar preparation for termination. Then you will fix your, um, your actual connector or your mod plug or your uh, keystone. And you wrap, you get that drain wire grounded and wrapped around the cable and the actual connector that you're utilizing, depending on your application. So that's just like an internal or an external ground, depending on the type of application or connector you're using. So this is the same principle. So this will be an internal ground with you utilizing the actual braid. It's what we call the braid right here. So that's just a quick rundown on that. So with this specific connector, this has like a little white wax or plastic little uh, protector. Basically, this is just a debris guard, keeping a lot of debris and uh, dust and stuff from getting inside the connector, which is great on buildings part. So good job on that one building. So what I do to get that out of there is I just poke it with the uh, center conductor. And if I didn't mention already, I don't think I did. Just a quick rundown on what the actual components are called on the physical coaxial itself. So if you look at the coax here, you will see you have the braid, like I explained, the outer jacket, which it could be black or just vanilla color or any color. Then you have your center conductor, which is the copper or copper clad um, conductor. So that's the heartbeat of your cable. And then that white wax material right there in the middle between the foil and the center conductor, that's gonna be your dielectric. So it's important when we're installing this connector that we don't mar, scratch, rip, tear, or deface or defect our uh, center our center conductor, our dielectric, or our foil shield at all in any way. So with that being said, what I commonly do is with these building connectors, we break them apart, get that plastic piece off the back, and this is just your compression piece. We slide that over first to aid us in not damage or defacing the shield or the dielectric. This is the part of the connector that goes in towards our cable, our stripped cable. It's not gonna be this end. And how you tell the difference is, you know, you just took your plastic piece off the back. Your labeling is down here as well. And more, more importantly, and more obviously than not, um, your threads are the part that always face out. So this is your connecting piece to whatever application you're connecting to, the back of a television, VCR, um, or your actual splitter or a wall plate or a barrel connector, anything of that nature. So we take this in and we insert slowly let the connector do the work. You'll slowly just seat it. I'm not pushing at all until I know I have it over there nicely. So we don't want to nick or mar. And right now we have a clean, clean seat in there. So we want to make sure we have a clean seat and then we go for it. And how I do this is I twist clockwise as I push down. And it sometimes it takes force, sometimes it'll slide right over. So this one was very simple to do and slide right over. And if we look in there, we what they used to tell us um, when I was first in the industry a long time ago is uh, fill up the glass of milk. So you have your inside body of that actual coaxial connector. 
You want that um, dielectric to be flush with the inside body of that connector. So we're down or we're recessed just a little bit too far. So we want to try to work it in a little bit more to get it flush. And that's just a simple continuation of pushing and twisting. And we're just about flush. So we butt up our plastic uh, compression piece to the body of the connector. We take our compression tool, ensure that you have the right um, die pointing towards the connector body. And then we go ahead and insert it. And there we go. Make sure we're inserted. Make sure everything is uh, flush. And we go ahead and crimp. There we go. So we have a perfectly compressed, perfectly crimped uh, coax, RG6 coaxial connector. And this is the building brand. So I'm going to do an example for the PPC brand as well, because that's just one step less because it doesn't have that plastic uh, compression uh, piece on the back of it. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this off. And we'll get ready to prep again, guys. So really quick. Put that on there. Swing this way. Swing back. Pop off. And then we want to go ahead and get all of our braid. Get that braid away from our foil shield. And we want to keep our foil shield fully intact. So... If you're a novice at this, there's no rush. You know, make sure you get a good technique down pat. When I learned, I was kind of just thrown into the field. So it, it was a rush. And uh, I was kind of, it was an older guy. So I was kind of getting, uh, you know, kind of getting fussed at, for lack of better words. You know, like, come on, man. Come on, man. You know, that doesn't look good. That's bad. And a lot of times we were failing on our uh, our drop test with our meter, you know, because I was doing poor poorly with the termination. So it's very, very, very important and essential that we have a clean, good, as perfect as we can get termination out there in the field because we'll have signal degradation. You'll have pixelation. You'll have tiling. Sometimes your receiver or whatever item you're using um, or for whatever application, you'll, you'll have a lot of issues and a lot of complications. And uh, the first thing that you want to check is your termination. So that's very important. So again, we want to make sure we're using the right end. That end has the threads in it, so we know that's going to be facing whatever application be uh, be uh, terminated to that application. So we want to go to the rear body of it, and it will always have some type of writing on the rear body and that unique opening. So again, just like with the building connector we did first, we want to slide over there. Make sure we're not scratching. It should just pretty much virtually slide on and rock on itself. So now we get to doing the twist and the push motion. So that PPC... Perfect, perfect. I really love these connectors. PPC connectors are fantastic and flawless. So our glass of milk is full or we're properly seated with the dielectric flush to the inside body of the connector. So now we're ready to go ahead and compress. So let's go ahead and slowly, slowly put that in there. Make sure we get a little bit of our um, center conductor inside of the F, uh, F die body and then go ahead and compress, guys. All right. Make sure we got a clean, even compression. Yep, we do. And the reason why I did it twice is if you look, sometimes the compression will be off a little bit. Like it'll it'll be off a hair here or here. You want to make sure we're completely compressed all the way around the connector body. Sorry, I'm trying my best to stay in frame. And then we're good to go. That stinger's a little long. We kind of want it like a sixteenth of an inch out of the connector. 16th to an eighth of an inch out of the connector and we're good to go there. So that's a perfect, perfect termination. And there you go. So we'll get that one clean. And um, being that I have so much experience and been in the field doing this so for so long, I kind of know by eye exactly where we need to be on those uh, connector uh, center conductors or commonly referred to as the stinger. So that's pretty much it, guys. Um, I'll show you an example of the connector being uh, terminated to the application. So we just fix it to that application and screw it on. And this is just your commonplace splitter or drop splitter. And then like if we had wall plates, sometimes they're called, referred to as face plates. You'll see this barrel connector sticking out of that face plate. So this will be that application here. And you just get it on there, screw it on. So this is like I said, this will sometimes be on a wall plate in the uh in the wall some are in ceilings some are above up high and some are at regular 18 inches or on center so there you have it guys 
Simple as that. Uh, after this video, you should be pretty good to go at it. I tried to give you as much detail as I could. Again, um, there's not much difference between these connectors aside from the brand and just uh, the particular application that you're using. This PPC is one of my favorite brands for all types of cable, uh, except for Plenum. I haven't been successful with this for, uh, for Plenum, and I don't think it's designed for that. This uh, building snap and seal, FSN S6U, is a perfect application for Plenum. These are both, both excuse me, phenomenal, uh, phenomenal products, phenomenal F connectors, and these they manufacture these type of connectors for all styles, so you're 59, your uh, RG6, RG59, RG7, and RG11. Thank you guys so much. And um, again, go to that Jonar Tools website, so jonar.com, and uh, take a look at some of these tools. They make so many great tools for us installers and technicians, whether you're novice, you're uh, just a DIYer, or you've been in the trade 15, 16 plus years like myself. Um, Jonar Tools has your back. So go, go to that website, check them out. They have fantastic product, guys. And um, if you like the attraction and like the way I'm going with these how-to videos, or if you have any suggestions or recommendations, I am always open to that. So reach out to me on both of my platforms. You're looking at this video now on YouTube, so leave it down in the comments. If you haven't already subscribed, smash that uh, subscribe button, smash that like button. Reach out to me, let me know via um, Instagram as well. And go ahead and uh, follow. So hit that like button and uh, share. Go ahead and comment as well. Thank you so much, guys, for watching. Peace.